Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at nuclear fusion. So let's get started. Now, nuclear fusion is often discussed alongside nuclear fission because the two processes are, in a way, opposites. So we'll start with the definition and then we'll look at what it involves. So nuclear fusion is the process of small nuclei joining together to form a larger nucleus, with energy being released. So notice that instead of splitting apart like in fission, we're now joining together some smaller nuclei. But just like before, we've also got energy being released, because in nuclear fusion reactors, it's going to be the energy released from the nuclear fusion process that can lead to the generation of electricity. Just to help you visualize this a bit more, I'm going to show you a quick animation. So here we've got two lighter nuclei, and if I click play, they join together and release release energy, as well as a neutron there. You saw that blue neutron moving off. So I'll just show you that again. So we've got two nuclei joining together, creating a larger nucleus and some energy with a neutron being fired off. Going back to the notes now, it says that nuclear fusion occurs constantly in the sun where hydrogen nuclei combine to form helium with the release of energy. So in the core of the sun, you've got all this hydrogen, which is fusing together through nuclear fusion to form helium with the release of energy. Comparing nuclear fission reactors to nuclear fusion reactors, it's thought that nuclear fusion would be a cleaner, safer, more efficient and more abundant source of power than nuclear fission, but it's not currently in use since experimental fusion reactors do not provide a commercially viable amount of energy just yet. So what we mean by commercially viable is that the amount of energy we can produce from nuclear fusion just now is costing more to produce the same energy using nuclear fission. So we want to try and get nuclear fusion to cost the same or even cheaper than current nuclear nuclear fission reactors. Here's a picture of the nuclear fusion process, just like the animation I showed you. So you've got two lighter nuclei which are going to fuse together, and when they combine they've formed a larger, heavier nucleus with the release of energy. Here's an example as well, which is a deuterium-tritium reaction that involves one atom of deuterium and one atom of tritium combining to form a helium-4 atom and a neutron. So there's your deuterium, which is hydrogen-2, and your tritium, which is hydrogen-3, and when these fuse together they form helium-4 and a neutron. It then says that most of of the energy released is in the form of the high energy neutron, so this carries away most of the energy in the form of kinetic energy. We're now going to look at why nuclear fusion is difficult to do. It says here that when hydrogen atoms fuse, the nuclei must come together. However, the protons in each nucleus will tend to repel each other because they have the same charge. They're both positively charged. So remember, like charges repel, and we therefore need special conditions to overcome this. So these are a high temperature and a high pressure. So a high temperature gives the hydrogen atoms enough energy to overcome the electrical repulsion between the protons whereas the high pressure squeezes the hydrogen atoms together. So a combination of a high temperature and high pressure is going to allow plasma, the fourth state of matter, to exist in nuclear fusion reactors. But because the conditions are so hot, then that causes problems. So something that needs lots of consideration if you want to use a nuclear fusion reactor is this thing called plasma containment, and this is really important for you to remember. It says here that as the hydrogen plasma needs to be heated well beyond the melting point of any known material, it is important that it does not come into contact with any parts of the reactor. This is because it's going to melt any parts of the reactor because it's hotter than any known material. So what can we do and how can we make sure the plasma is contained within the reactor and doesn't spill out? Well, we can keep the plasma contained by using powerful magnetic fields from strong superconducting magnets to prevent the hydrogen plasma from physically touching anything. We're just going to finish by looking at some advantages of nuclear fusion. So there's five advantages here, and the first one is abundant energy. So it says that nuclear fusion reactions release nearly 4 million times more energy than a chemical reaction, such as the burning of coal, oil or gas, so that's our fossil fuel power stations, and 4 times as much as nuclear fission reactions at equal mass. So that's saying that the same mass of fuel for a nuclear fusion reaction will produce 4 times the amount of energy for the same mass of fuel for a nuclear fission reaction. The next one is sustainability, so fusion fuels are widely available and nearly inexhaustible. And one major source of the fuel is water, because water contains hydrogen, and we saw earlier that we were using deuterium, which is hydrogen 2, and tritium, which is hydrogen 3, to form helium in the nuclear fusion process. The next one is that there is no pollution, so fusion doesn't emit harmful toxins like carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So that is something that nuclear fission and fusion have in common, so neither of them emit pollution like carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There's also no long-lived radioactive waste for nuclear fusion, unlike nuclear fission. So nuclear fusion reactors produce no high-activity, long-lived nuclear waste. So you don't have to worry about the storing of nuclear waste over long, long periods of time. The last one here, although there are 
others is that there's no risk of meltdown, so a nuclear accident is not possible in a fusion device. There's also no risk of a chain reaction. And that's because there's only ever enough fuel in the vessel of the reactor for a few seconds at any one time. One that isn't mentioned here is cost, and that's because the cost of fusion is currently greater than the cost of fission, but it's thought that in the future we'll get the cost down to be roughly the same, which will mean that because of all these advantages, it would be a good idea to move to nuclear fusion rather than nuclear fission. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.